Bonjour, mon ami. Welcome back to another episode of Patagonia. Today we're going to take a quick trip to Paris, um, which is why I have our French cafe music playing in the background. I thought you would like that. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the Paris system for urine cytology. So thanks to Kurt's notes for this uh, simple breakdown of urine cytology, just to kind of get us thinking about it. And obviously we can dive into more detailed resources um, and reference other things in our studies. But when we approach a urine specimen, after we determine if the specimen is adequate based on the cellularity, um, what kind of cells we're seeing, the volume, etc., then we're going to move on and we're going to want to assess the atypia that we're seeing. And the categories that we're going to end up landing on are going to be either negative for high-grade urothelial carcinoma, low-grade urothelial neoplasm or LGUN, atypical, suspicious for high-grade urothelial carcinoma, or positive for high-grade urothelial carcinoma. So let's just work our way down the left side. So if we're assessing cytologic atypia and we're not seeing any, then we're going to want to look and see if there's any fibrovascular cores. If there are, it could be a pun lump or a papilloma, because as we know, uh, papillary structures are often composed of fibrovascular cores. If there are no fibrovascular cores, we're gonna to wanna to check the endoscopy, radiology, and the clinical impression, and then perhaps sign it out as negative if we're not seeing any concerning features. However, if we do see some cytologic atypia, we're gonna to wanna to assess the degree of that atypia, um, starting with the N to C ratio. So you can see over here, these cells have a very high N to C ratio. So most of the cell is composed of the nucleus, very little cytoplasm, um, also occurring here, and a little less so here, but still the nucleus, nuclei are larger than over here. So if you have mild atypia, and the nuclear cytoplasmic ratio is greater than 0.5, plus one of these criteria of hyperchromasia, coarse chromatin, and irregular chromatin, an irregular like nuclear membrane or chromatin rim, um, then you could land potentially in the atypical category if there is no explanation for why that atypia is there. Like if they have prior treatment or radiation, something like that, then most likely it's going to be negative or reactive changes secondary to treatment. So we always want to take the whole picture of our patients um, into account. So let's say the N to C ratio is actually greater than 0.7 and you have hyperchromasia plus at least one of the following categories, coarse chromatin or irregular nuclear membranes. Then you're, wanna, you're going to want to quantify the atypical cells so if there's many of them, like more than 10, that's gonna be good for positive for high-grade urothelial carcinoma. However, if there's less than five to 10 cells, that's only going to get you to the suspicious category. So a nice little breakdown, very simple, good to review, and uh, can really get you a long way um, on your cyto rotation. And here's just a table kind of talking about that same thing. I'm not going to belabor the point. I uh, really already went through all of it in that algorithm. But again, for these categories, AUC, or like atypical, you can think of this as atypical, suspicious, and high grade. So for atypical, key into that N to C ratio, and that's what's gonna help us um, determine that. So if you have that N to C ratio greater than 0.5, it could be in that atypical category. And then if it's suspicious for high grade or high grade, the N to C ratio is typically gonna be greater than 0.7. And then at that point, you're just gonna quantify, okay, how many cells am I seeing? Am I seeing more than 10? And this is good for high grade. Um, if, this is, if it's rare, less than five to 10 cells, then maybe we just sign it out as suspicious. And then these tables also, I'm not gonna belabor them too much but they kind of just go a little bit into the relative risk of the diagnostic categories as outlined in the Paris system. 
So for unsatisfactory, the risk of malignancy is five, less than five to 10%. Um, negative for high grade, zero to 10%. Atypical urothelial cells or that AUC, that's that category with greater than 0.5 end to C ratio, has about an eight to 35% risk of malignancy. Suspicious for high grade, 50 to 90%. Low grade urothelial neoplasm around 10%. And then high-grade urothelial carcinoma or other malignancy, greater, greater than 90% chance of malignancy. And then here are some guidelines for estimating cellularity in instrumented urinary specimens. Um, this info can be used to help you um, get to adequacy. And I'll leave that um, for you to review on your own. So some additional studies can be done when we're looking at urine cytology, and that is the Eurovision fish. So there's four markers. So you can have chromosome enumeration probes targeting the pericentromeric region on chromosomes 3, 7, and 17, looking for aneuploidy. Or you can have specific probe targeting 9P21 loci, which is the P16 gene looking for a loss. So it's gonna be chromosomes three, seven, and 17 with a specific probe targeting 9P21 loci, which is that P16 gene looking for a loss. And then analysis of that, so it's considered positive if four or more of 25 analyzed cells show two or more of chromosome three, seven, or 17, um, such as a chromosome gain or it's considered positive if 12 or more of the 25 analyzed cells show have total loss of 9P21. If not positive after 25 cells, keep counting until all cells are analyzed. And then of note, some reactive cells such as umbrella cells can be tetraploid. So that's it folks, that was our quick trip to Paris and uh, just a nice little short, concise review on urine cytology, and I hope you found it helpful, and take care.